Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. And in this tutorial, uh, we will be provisioning SharePoint assets as part of your SharePoint Framework solution. So we're going to use a classic, uh, so to say, classic uh, feature framework as part of the SPPKJ file. And whenever do we install the solution explicitly to a site, we actually use those feature framework elements to create us a columns and content types and lists, and we can even upgrade those things as well. It's really important to realize that this capability only works when you are using uh, the site scope deployment option. So this option is not available if you're using the tenant wide deployment option of your solution. So please consider that uh, when you are designing your solution. This video has been recorded in January 2020 and it is using SharePoint Framework 1.10 version. Um, if you're watching this video later on um, and with a new SharePoint Framework version, uh, please check the code uh, or the documentation because we keep the written guidance always up to date and the videos are slightly more infrequently updated. But let's actually get into the actual tutorial. So let me jump into my Windows 10 machine. And let's start by again going first on the on the right location where we actually have or where I'm storing all of my tutorial code uh, in this clean Windows 10 machine. Uh, oop, uh, that wasn't my intention actually. I just wanted to clear up the, the console. Um, and in here, let's actually create uh, MD assets uh, Asset uh, deployment uh, web part folder. And let's actually go there. And in here, let's execute the Microsoft uh, SharePoint Yeoman generator, which will basically then use to create us the basic structure. So in this case, we're not going to actually concentrate on the web part as such. We're going to concentrate on, on deployment of individual assets as part of the web part deployment to a site. So let's actually uh, use the default entry as the solution name. Let's target SharePoint Online. Doesn't really matter. The, the option is, is supported by all of the environments. We're going to use the current folder. We're not going to support tenant-wide deployment. So this is a really important thing because if you would be using tenant-wide deployment, these additional feature framework assets would not have any impact. So they're only applied when you are explicitly installing the solution to a specific site. So really important thing to understand. And we're not going to actually have any unique permissions. We're going to create a web part. Technically, uh, we don't actually even uh, use the web part. Uh, we're just going to concentrate on deployment of the uh, of the assets. Uh, deployment web part. And there we go. And no JavaScript uh, web part, uh, JavaScript framework. Um, that's going to now start the scaffolding, and we're going to speed up the video, um, so saving a few minutes of time uh, rather than watching uh, things running in console. So let's continue within a few seconds. And there we go. Now the solution structure has been created. So let's actually modify uh, the solution structure uh, to have some assets deployed as part of the deployment of the solution to the SharePoint site. So uh, first of all, uh, let's actually create a, a new folder. Uh, so uh, in uh, in here, uh, let's actually create uh, quickly a, a SharePoint folder which is going to be actually automatically created uh, for us as whenever the solution structure is also being created or packaged. Um, but in here, we can also create assets folder. And in the assets folder, let's create elements, uh, elements.xml file. And this is basically then intended to define um, what kind of settings and what kind of, well, what kind of assets uh, will be deployed or created as part of the deployment to the site. And I'm going to copy the XML structure directly uh, from the from the documentation, but let's have a look on what's actually happening here. So this is Elements XML file. Uh, we're using the a classic Elements XML structure, which has been in SharePoint since 2007 version. And we're basically creating here a currency field. Uh, we are creating here a field, a choice field. Then we are creating a content type called cost center, which is actually referencing those two fields. Uh, so the unique goods of those fields. And then we are creating a list instance, which is using a custom scale which we haven't actually created yet. So we're going to create that one in a second um, with a feature ID, specific feature ID that is actually feature ID of a custom list, a normal custom list, which will be a template type of 100. And it's going to be created in the SBFX list a URL named as FBFX list. 
so that's basically the instructions uh, for creating a custom list with a with a uh, with the settings, and we are creating fields and content types in a site level. So we haven't actually associated those things to the list. And that's actually what we're going to do next in the schema XML file. So let's create a new file here, uh, right next to the elements XML file called uh, schema schema.xml, and schema XML file uh, contains then following XML structures. So let's have a look on actually what's happening here as well. So um, this is typically the schema XML file is much, much more complex and much, much more uh, sophisticated. So this is quite simple, but this is almost like the simplistic schema uh, as possible. Uh, so uh, in here, we are referencing the content type, which we created in the elements XML file. We are also creating a view to that list. And then in that view, we are basically setting uh, the SPFX amount and SPFX cost center, which are the fields, which were created in the elements XML file. Let's go back in here, um, SPFX cost center and SPFX amount. So if we go back in the schema file, we can actually see those fields being referenced then in the view, so in the basic view. And uh, we, we have some uh, standard uh, settings and standard configurations which have to be here. So basically what we're doing is that we are creating a custom list with a default view, having those two different uh, columns available uh, or visible. So let's save the settings uh, and everything is fine. The next step is then to make sure that whenever the solution is getting deployed, we tell SharePoint that these two files actually exist and, and SharePoint should change its behavior based on these two files. So let's actually go to the config folder and package solution JSON, where we actually define the solution structure. So obviously this has the SPP KT file, has the version details and the name of the, the file as well. And we're gonna modify this slightly. So let's actually modify this by having additional features section where we then actually define uh, additional settings. So I'm gonna actually do here a comma and I'm going to copy the additional settings uh, from the documentation so that we get everything uh, correct here. Now, uh, in here, uh, there's a, a good note, update the ID with a new good, new good, and this is a good practice because uh, we can actually just do a random good, so I can actually update that one to be something else, and that's something else, so we know that it's a unique good, rather than always using the same good what we have in the documentation as well, so let's actually get rid of that. Now, what we're doing here is that we're defining a SharePoint feature framework feature, a custom feature, which is created automatically as part of the packaging of the solution. So whenever the solution is getting deployed to the site level, we will have a feature named as, as a deployment by part client site solution with a description of that one. We could absolutely change these to be slightly more descriptive uh, with a unique GUID of that and a version 1.0. And that includes elements XML file and schema XML file. So those files which we just created. And that's basically the, the only association which is needed between the, the files. So let's actually test things out uh, and test that everything is working properly in the site level. So let's clear up uh, that one slightly. Let's run Gallup uh, Bundle. And in this case, we're not really interested on actually uh, packaging the actual code. So it doesn't really matter that we're not using the dash dash ship uh, switch uh, because we're really concentrating on the on the asset deployment part of the solution packaging. It's so making things simple and just isolating that, this scenario in this tutorial. And then do Gallup uh, Packet uh, Solution. So we actually create the solution file. There we go. And that creates then the, the SharePoint folder in here. Well, we created the SharePoint folder already manually, but it would have created the SharePoint folder and then it created the solution folder and then it created the debug folder. And now we can actually see in the debug folder, we have everything what's inside of that open XML file. SPPKG file is an open XML file, which contains all of these assets. And if we have a closer look on here, we can actually see that there is a feature file. Let's actually do a uh, word wrap. There's a feature XML file called Asset Deployment Web Part Solution. There are uh, additional features. There's the schema XML file. We are deploying uh, content types. We are deploying uh, other assets as well. Oop, uh, actually, that's the feature file uh, where we actually have the field, uh, field um, and content type and list and stuff information. So the element XML file which we created was basically 
packaged inside of the SPP KG file. And now when we activate that in the site level, it will then create these particular assets in the site collection or in the site where it's actually being activated. Um, now let's actually do that. So let's let's open up uh, whoop, let's open up the solution folder. Uh, oh, not open in terminal. That wasn't what I'm intended to do, but I can do actually Explorer from here as well. So that works. Uh, so there's our as a deployment web part, and then let's open up our app catalog. So we're able to test out uh, things as well. So I know that it in, in my case, oh, let's actually refresh that. So I'll get the URL properly and do slash site slash uh, apps, which is the app catalog in this particular tenant. So here, there's our app catalog. There's quite a few other solutions here as well already. Uh, so, but then we don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's actually track and drop uh, that uh, solution file in, and that's going to be then validated. Uh, we'll, we can see that it's still pointing the local host. It doesn't really matter because we're not actually going to even test uh, the web part. We're just concentrating on provisioning of the actual assets. And then we can, uh, one main point here to understand, it is not a tenant deployed option. Uh, so that's being true. Um, so basically you have to install that explicitly to a site when these settings will be applied. And let's actually do that. So let's go to a to our group side or a team side, doesn't really matter uh, which side we're going to use. So in my case, I'm going to just use my group site, uh, which is an existing site in my tenant. You can use whatever site you want for, for testing the following capability. And then let's go to the site contents. And, and then let's actually choose new and app, which might be slightly confusing, but it's, it's we'll be taking advantage of the app infrastructure. So we're adding a new capability. So that's that's the app capability. And we can actually see the asset deployment web part client side solution option here available. Uh, we click that one, we'll get some additional details and that starts the installation. So in my case, I actually have a one web part already installed. Don't worry about that one. We are now installing the asset deployment web part to the site and we can now do F5 until the installation is completed. Now, what's interesting here, I did an F5 and we can already see the SPFX list being generated and we can actually see that the, the other assets are being generated gradually as well. So let's click the F5 until that has been properly deployed. There we go. We can see the SharePoint uh, SPFX list file, the list definition here. And we can actually see, uh, if I close that one, it is a list which has an amount field and a cost center field immediately available. So we basically now, as part of the deployment of the solution, we created a list uh, using actually a system account. So whenever the user created, added the, the solution to the site, we created a system account, created also the list and the needed assets for it. And your web part and solutions can take advantage of this configuration. So you could actually have a, let's say, a SharePoint framework web part or an extension, which then is saving or storing information to the site or this list which could be just as well hidden. So it doesn't have to be necessarily visible for the end users as well. But as you can see from here, we have a cost center and cost center had some choice option values. And if you go back in here, we can actually see that the cost center had choice uh, values like administration information facilities, operations, and we can actually see the same values available there. So we basically re-auto generated the field and configuration uh, for that site. Good. The next thing uh, is really around then the, okay, so what if I need to actually modify this list? So how would I make sure that this list has new columns or other settings if that would be the use case? So what if I need to, my web part or business logic is going to be changed and I need to add a new column here. And sure, you could actually guide the end user to do that. But if you have hundreds of sites, you want to explicitly update the solution as part of the update, solu update operation, we would then automatically automatically change the list structure. And let's actually walk that through as well. So we kind of take advantage of two different elements called apply element manifest and add content type field uh, elements. So let's actually do that. Let me close everything else from here and let's close the terminal to make things uh, more understandable. So we are in the solution structure. Uh, well, I'm in the assets folder and in the assets folder, I'm going to actually create elements v2.xml file 
And this is going to be basically our, let's say, a additional element which is going to be deployed as part of our V2 version of the solution. And let's actually copy that one. And in here, we are basically saying that, hey, we want to have a new SharePoint instance or list instance, uh, which is going to be called new list. And new list provisions from V2 is the description. So quite simple scenario and simple scenario, but you'll understand the basic structure. Now, <clears throat> you can then, uh, then we need to do an upgrade actions V2 XML. So basically, we need to do an instructions for SharePoint that whenever we are moving from a V1 to V2, this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to actually create an upgrade actions V2 XML. And then I'm going to copy uh, the information from the documentation. And what's going to happen here is that we're saying for SharePoint that whenever we upgrade from a previous version, please execute this XML file, which is going to be located. That's the folder uh, name of the feature or the unique ID of the feature. And then it's going to be named elements v2 XML, uh, like actually named over there. How would I know what is this good in here? Is that I can actually check that one out uh, few, using a few different options. So I could actually, the, probably the easiest way is go to the packet solution and we can actually see and the unique ID, oh, uh, unique ID is over there. Sorry, sorry. Um, we can actually, the easiest way to actually do that is to have a look on the on the debug folder. So we can actually see what is the, the, the pointer and what is the structure in here as well. Now, we need to make sure that app actually, now this is slightly confusing. Uh, so we need to make sure that that GUID is matching on the feature framework ID. So in here, we have the feature framework ID. We can actually see that the elements file is in a feature framework ID specific folder in the solution package. And that means that in the upgrade actions, we actually need to update that one accordingly as well. So that's gonna be then matching on where the elements v2 file is gonna be located. And we can easily actually test things out as well. So whenever we do packaging, we can double check that that's working properly. And let's get back on that one in a second. Now, let's go back on the packet solution because we now we need to tell that we have a new version available. So let's actually upgrade. Oh, let's upgrade the package as a V2. Uh, which, uh, and let's upgrade the feature more importantly, as a V2, technically the package version isn't, well, that's indicating a version change and the feature for, uh, feature is indicating a version change as well. So it's a good practice actually to keep them uh, in sync when you're doing these kind of operations. And then what we're doing here is that we are including upgrade actions element inside of this solution structure. So Basically, again, what we're doing here is that we're saying whenever there will be a feature framework upgrade, please execute this XML file. And the upgrade action v2 is basically the file which we just created, which is saying, hey, oh, there's an upgrade action. So as part of the upgrade action, please execute this XML file, which is the elements v2 XML. And based on that one, we will create a new list available on the site. Hopefully that makes sense. And obviously the basic structures and everything else and the model which we're using here has existed in SharePoint since 2010. So the same model which we're behind of the scenes using here is actually what we used to have in on-premises um, as part of the farm solution deployment options. Now, let's go back on the console side. Let's clear up that one. Let's actually do some packaging. So call bundle. And Dun, 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 dun. Technically, the package solution would be enough in this case because JavaScript isn't being used, but still, let's run the call bundle. It's a good practice to actually make that happen always first. And then do a package solution. And that's going to now create the actual SPPKT file, the open XML file, uh, which contains the V2 version of the solution. So let's actually do that. And let's have a look on what was actually created uh, as part of in here. So let me extend uh, the SharePoint folder. Let me extend the debug folder. And uh, in here, we can now see that inside of that folder, the unique GUID, we can actually see the V2 upgrade actions available. And these are the one the way which we actually point and elements XML elements uh, V2 is actually missing 
from that folder. So we know that we did actually forget about something and, I, and that is true. I didn't actually have a mistake updating the packet solution. So let me go back on the packet solution and we can actually see that I didn't include the V2 version of the element. So let's actually include that one in here. There we go. And like it is actually in the documentation as well. So I didn't do that properly and paste that one in and save it. And let's rerun the call bundle. And also the call package solution. So there's call bundle. And the next one was the packet solution. And then let's actually double check again what we have on the SharePoint and the folder uh, over there. So we should see that folder being updated and as we can, and we can actually see the elements v2 file now being properly included in the packet. So we know that that XML file is included in the SPPKG file because the content of the debug folder is actually the one which is inside of the SPPKG file. And that means that we now can actually do the upgrade operation. So let's actually make that happen. So let me open up uh, the actual app catalog. It's in, uh, let's actually go to the app catalog. There we go. And in the SharePoint app catalog, let's actually then track and drop a new version available. So track and drop that one in. And it's going to basically say that solution already exists. Uh, one thing maybe to notice here, the solution is already there and it's saying right now version 1.0.00. And when we do replace, we can see an update happening there. And there's a confirmation that this is what you actually want to do. So let's click deploy. And we can actually see that the app version being 2.0000. And as part of this deployment or a new version, installing the new version, we did not yet upgrade anything on a site level. So let's actually go to the site and let's go to the groups. Because of this model, sorry, uh, group is the site URL. Because this model takes advantage of the SharePoint app uh, infrastructure, these updates are not automatic either. Um, and so what actually happens here is that if we have a look on the asset deployment web part solution in the site level, if you go to the details uh, settings, we can actually see um, that there's a new version available on of the SAP. So, and we can actually click now to get it to actually start the upgrade process. So let's actually do that. So let's click that one and we'll go back on the site contents we can actually see that the installation is now starting to happen. And after a while, if we start doing the refresh with an F5, we can absolutely see the new list getting generated. After a while, when SharePoint starts reading the XML files, starts reading the installation instructions, starts reading what's going to actually happen uh, with the new version of that particular solution. And there we go. Now we can see the new list getting automatically generated as part of the update of that uh, solution. And refreshing that one, we can actually see that the, the update is, is uh, completed in any moment of now. And that's going to be then running the V2 version of the solution. But we can already see the list available in here. And that was just a normal custom list with no additional configurations. Uh, we do support, uh, you can absolutely also modify the existing content types. You can actually include settings on the existing list. You could upgrade some additional uh, settings on the on the side as well. So well, there are multiple different options which are available for the for the asset provisioning. But the key point to understand here is that if you prefer to use the tenant deployment option, this option is not available for you. So you cannot actually take advantage of the asset provisioning in a site level because the asset provisioning basically is dependent on the operations at the site level. Uh, including to upgrade operations at the site level. Also a good thing to notice that whenever we actually updated the solution in the app catalog, so if this web part, if this solution would have actually contained a web part, that web part code would have been updated already at the moment when the app catalog uh, is being, app catalog site collection is being updated. So whenever we install a new version of the solution in app catalog, that means that at the same moment, we already run, start executing a new version of the web part code or any other JavaScript code because that those assets are centrally located. But 
the actual asset level upgrading only happens when we explicitly go and we went basically to the detail software solution and we explicitly started the new version upgrade operation, which you can actually do using API as well. So there's an option of doing that um, and with using the ALM APIs in the site level as well. But that's it for the asset uh, provisioning. So you can take advantage uh, of the asset provisioning and the feature framework structures using the classic feature framework elements uh, with them in by including these XML files as part of your solution. Definitely an option. A good, good point to also call out that this, whenever you're doing this, uh, all of these upgrades and everything else are being done using the system account so that they are being created by SharePoint system account, rather than if you actually provision the lists and assets and columns using your web part, then you're dependent on the permissions of the user. Um, so something to be aware, something to evaluate uh, based on your overall design, what are you actually, or how do you define, or how do you provision potential lists, which might be useful for your solution. But that's it for this one. Uh, hopefully you find the guidance useful. Mm -hmm.